warm good morning or good evening ladies and gentlemen as per the time refers to this is Zanik Advai from Vertex, the solution of every need. How is everyone doing? I hope you are liking and subscribing to the YouTube channel. And I hope you are liking the content of the videos I'm uploading at YouTube. If there is any kind of questions, queries or doubts, you may contact me. My contact details are available by the end of this presentation, by end of the slides. And also it is available in the description box below if you want to discuss any particular topic you find difficult or you want to discuss any any topic any you know um, current topics um, about uh, politics you want to study polity political uh, science English you want to discuss any topic on management marketing so you may leave uh, that topic in the description or uh, sorry in the comment section below or you may also email me for any particular difficulties this video I'm specifically doing for the people who want to improve the grammar or the grammatical skills in English language as well as it is a beneficial video for students who are studying in grade 6 7 8 9 uh, of the respective boards it goes well with the IGCSC, IB, ICSC, CIE, CBSC curriculum as well even the state boards or local board students they can also watch this video so this video is based on verbs so um, I recently received uh, a lot of inquiries uh, offline and online that we want to improve the texture and the foundation of the language so I think uh, grammar is the foundation of any language and I focus on grammar a lot whether it is the written form or the spoken form though uh, uh, you know uh, it's not necessary that you feel hesitant in speaking English because you are lacking some grammar skills you should speak in, in English whether you speak right or the wrong but you should keep trying hard to speak and learn the language and uh, simultaneously you should also improve uh, grammatical skills for the you know concrete foundation of the language so I am beginning this session with verbs we'll see uh, the highlights I have highlighted the definitions the few examples and verbs the classification and forms I'm discussing um, though um, each of the classification is uh, thoroughly in depth so I'll keep uploading uh, time to time some uh, good topics for your knowledge let's see what we have today uh, in this presentation I hope you enjoy and if you enjoy it please give me a thumbs up and share with your family friends and relatives okay ladies and gentlemen and children who are watching this video what is a verb we always say verb is very important to learn what is verb uh, but we should know what what is verb actually agar main hindi mein bolu to verb ko hindi mein kriya kehte hain wo shabd jo kisi karya ke hone ka bodh karate hain unko hum kriya kehte hain ye kriya ki paribhasha hai hindi mein but what is the definition of Kriya or what is the definition of verb in English? Let's see. The words which describes an action are called verbs. Verbs are the most important element of English language. Why does um, uh, the, this definition refers to the importance uh, of verb in the language? Because if there is no verb in a sentence, it does not have any meaning it becomes meaningless so what a person the doer or the subject is doing all right in the past in the present or in the future the words refers to the verb 
define those actions right so an action can uh, you know it the action could be uh, of a past right anything that happened in the past refers to the past tense so the verb describing the past tense okay so it ends with ed i'll discuss it furthermore what is happening right now uh, it is the present tense and the verbs uh, ending with ing form right or not with the ing form simple present tense it refers to the simple present tense we will discuss tenses also uh, in my next video before uh, learning about tenses verb is very important element to learn because if we do not know what is a verb we are unable to understand tenses so tense and verb is interrelated with each other so if you want to improve tenses your verbs should be called if you want to improve verb you need a little bit of knowledge of tenses before moving on to tenses all right verbs help in proper structuring of the sentences with respect to the time i just explained that in any action happening in the past in the present or it would or it you know it will it shall happen in uh, the future refers to verb right for instance sleep go right watch these all are verb in the simple form this is the simple form of the verb i go to the school okay if i say ladies and gentlemen we are and children if i say i go please excuse me for the writing i am sure but you are able to read to the school lots of children goes to the school in the morning right now the summer vacation ended now children uh, i'm sure you must have enjoyed your summer vacations with your family and friends and now back to the school so i go to the school this is the first form of the verb so here go is the verb i is the subject who goes to the school i go to the school and where i go i go to the school right so it is a complete sentence a complete meaningful sentence so verb helps in proper structuring of the sentence with respect to the time all right i hope it is clear let's see what we have further then we have a verb has a subject in the usage i just explained i go to the school i go to the toilet okay i am going to the toilet i am going to the toilet i am going to the school that means main school ja rahi hu that means this action of going to the school is happening at the present hour right verbs change their form by adding ed and ing right now we will discuss in future slides that verbs have different classifications and different forms so when the verbs end with ed they become the, they refers to the past tense like watch if we talk about the word
uh, if we talk about the word watch please keep patience okay so here ladies and gentlemen and children in this word this is a verb watch matlab dekhna i watch the show i watch ellen's show i watch um, big boss 5 i watch the television i watch the cricket match so main cricket match dekhta hu main big boss dekhta hu right i watched the cricket match yesterday maine kal cricket match dekha tha right so watched ed when it is ending with ed it changed the form from the first to the third form past past form sorry right when we are using watching i n g right if i will add i n g i am watching the show main is main show dekh raha hu ya rahi hu right i am watching the show so i am watching the show becomes the action of the present time i hope this point is clear with everyone out here okay let's move forward there are various forms and classification of verbs in english let's see classifications and forms of verbs so we discussed uh the two forms that is the ed form and the ing form right the basic highlight i have given you about it let's see in detail what are those classifications and forms of verbs so verbs are broadly classified into two categories that is the lexical form or the main verb and auxiliary verb or helping verb so lexical or main verb defines the action of the subject okay and auxiliary as the name suggests helping verb helps the main verb i i just said i am watching the show so i am please keep patient watching the show for instance we'll take this example here so let's see this example i am watching the show i is the subject in this sentence am am is the auxiliary verb or the helping verb we will discuss it more further more in further future slides we'll see what are other auxiliary or helping verbs so am is here the auxiliary verb watching is the main verb ing form of it becomes the gerund watching the show main show dekh rahi hu 
right. So, am is refer referring to the auxiliary verb and watching is referring to the main verb, okay. I hope it is clear to everyone. Let us see further. Verbs have different forms depending upon the usage, right? We just discussed various forms of verbs. So, they have different forms depending upon the usage. We are using it in the past form, we are using it in the present form or we are using it in the future form. The main or lexical verb can be used with V1, V2, V3 form or infinitive base, simple, past respectively. Okay. So, infinitive. What is infinitive? Infinitive where to is used. To be, to have. So, when where to do, this is infinitive. Right? Sometimes we do not, uh, sometimes like to sing or sing. Sing here is also you uh, becoming you know uh, imperative uh, over here. We are not using to, right? So infinitive basically when we are using to. Okay, let's move further. Verbs ending with ed are regular, and the verbs not ending with ed are irregular in nature, right? We discussed it. Earlier. So, let us see what are regular verbs and what are irregular verbs in the further, further slides. Before that, we see the lexical or main verb. What is a lexical verb or a main verb? A lexical verb or main verb is an open class in linguistics verb which includes all except the auxiliary verb. So, except the auxiliary verb, ladies and gentlemen and children, except the auxiliary verb that is the helping verb all other verbs whether they are irregular in nature whether they are gerunds gerunds what are gerunds the ing form watching talking taking sleeping going showing eating these all are gerunds all right so these all are main verbs a lexical verb further classified as transitive verb and intransitive verb. If you see here, lexical verb are further classified into transitive and intransitive verbs. So, what are transitive verbs? So, we know that verbs are action words in simple sentence in a class 1 definition, right? We say they are action words. So, transitive verb in a sentence where there is a subject, there is a verb and an object and the and the action is carried on to the object, that verb is called as transitive, right? For instance, see this example here, I drove a car, right? So, I is the subject here, drove is the, this is irregular verb, ladies and gentlemen, this is irregular verb, this is a verb in this sentence. And car is an object. So, drove is the past form of drive, right? So, what, who, who drives or who drove? I, right? And what I drove? A car. So, car is an object, drove is the transitive verb and I is the subject. So, we have the subject, we have the verb and we have the object. So, it becomes a transitive verb. Whereas in the intransitive verb, we do not have any object, right? So, no action can be received. The boy fell, right? The boy fell. The boy is the subject and fell is the intransitive verb. But we do not don't know where the boy fell. The boy fell in the pond, the boy fell on the floor, the boy fell in the class, the boy fell on the road, we do not know, right? We just know the boy fell. So, there is no object in this sentence. 
that is why the action cannot be carried on to further it becomes intransitive verb okay i hope it's clear let's see what else we have okay let's see some more verbs over here we have a classification here of regular irregular and gerund so i already told you the verbs which end with ed illustrate becomes illustrated incorporate becomes incorporated maintain becomes maintained ensure becomes ensured ignore becomes ignored loot becomes looted lie becomes lied emphasize becomes emphasized establish become established investigate becomes investigated exist becomes existed and appreciate becomes appreciated i recommend you to use the dictionary for the meaning of these words likewise we have irregular verbs so irregular verbs dwell foresee cast deal have be leave make sweep understand write and undo i have an exercise here for everyone i told you the uh, regular form now it's your duty it's your job to find the irregular verb past tense find the past tense of the irregular verb right i'll tell you about the uh this i'll tell you one or two and rest you have to do by yourself let's see cast so cast is cast cast remain cast in all the three forms okay it doesn't become cast casted right it is cast 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 okay a uh, leave becomes left right make becomes made made m a d e rest you have to find by yourself i am not going to tell you all okay uh, if you want you can pause the video and search for the answers okay now let's move on to gerunds gerunds we as we know gerund ends with the ing form illustrating incorporating maintaining i am maintaining the records that means the records i am maintaining at the current time why are you ignoring me right so that the person is ignoring me at the current moment okay she is lying on the bed okay the police is investigating the case right the building is existing all right so these are few examples i just told you let's see what else we have now we have here the auxiliary or helping verb if you feel tired right now you can pause the video you can have a sip of water if you want to eat something you can go and eat right and then resume the video but do watch the video till the end okay it is very helpful for you auxiliary or helping verbs so what are auxiliary verb or helping verb so auxiliary verb or helping verb are basically classified into two categories the primary auxiliary verb or modal auxiliary verb right an auxiliary verb or helping verbs are used with the main verb in a sentence to express the tense or time modality voice emphasis etc right so we use auxiliary verb with the main verb 
I have given you the example. I am watching the show. So, am. Can you see here? Am is the primary verb. Right? Watching the show. So, watching was the main verb in that sentence. Right? Auxiliary verbs can be primarily classified as primary and modals. Primary verb or modal verb. The primary verb does not have any meaning, right? The B forms uh, is, am, was, were, right? They are the is, the past tense of is, is, was, and the past tense of are, is, were, okay? They are playing, wo abhi khel rahe hain. They were playing, wo khel rahe the. The action when you are telling this, the action was happening in the past. So, I told you one more thing. Do is the present form, the first form. And did is the past form of do. Okay. We never say did not, uh, they, uh, they didn't gone. Right. We don't say they didn't gone. Because did is the past tense of do and it is an auxiliary verb. So, we cannot use two verbs in the past tense together. We always say they did not go. We use the first form with did. I hope it is clear. I didn't do or I didn't go. So, I didn't gone is incorrect. We cannot use two past tense verb together, right? The modern verbs are used to indicate possibility, capability, necessity, permission, advice or obligation, right? So, modals are used basically when we have to emphasize something. Can I come in? It becomes the permission. Can I come in? If I am asking to somebody, I say, can I come in? Kya main andar jaun? So, it is a permission. You should do this. I am using should here. So, you should do this. I am giving an advice. Right? And it also becomes an obligation. Right? I can do this. I can do this. It becomes a capability. I have this capability to do this. So, I can do this. Right? I can go there. I can learn English. It becomes a capability. What is a possibility? It may rain today. So, may. There is a probability. There is uh, nothing is fixed that rain will happen or it, w it will rain, right? There is just a possibility, right? Because the weather uh, seems like this uh, and the forecast tells you this. So, there is a possibility that it may rain today. There is no fixed answer. Okay, she may do well. There is a no fixed, there is no fixed answer. Okay, let's see. Let's understand with examples. I want to sleep. So, here I want to sleep. Sleep is again uh, a verb here, the main verb or lexical verb. To, it becomes infinitive. I want to sleep. Have a nice day, right? Base. To be or not to be, that is a question. She worked hard here. Where to is applicable, it becomes infinitive. Worked hard, she worked hard. Right? It is past form of the verb, a different form of the verb ending with ed. The children are playing basketball. A is the auxiliary and playing is the lexical. Okay? The children, subject and what they are doing? Playing basketball. So basketball is an object. This exercise is easy to do. Again, infinitive. Okay. I hope uh, these examples are clear to everyone. 
okay ladies and gentlemen and children it was lovely uh, teaching you this beautiful topic i am signing off for today and if there is any further more doubts and you want to share your feedback please share your feedback in the comment section or you or you may also email me my email address um, is available in the description box below as well as on the slide uh, if there is any kind of a topic you would like to discuss please share thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for giving me your time happy learning and regards take care